So you guys really seem to like the flash tutorial I did, so here's another way to do the super speed effect, this time Sonic style. So to start out, I have this picture of Sonic, and this can be of anything, I just want something with some nice colors. You also need to have a transparent background. Now there are a lot of ways to do that, masking, green screen, I'm not really going to get into that in this video. So with it selected, I'm going to hit shift space, search for a transform node. So I'm just going to bring down the size so that he's a lot smaller. So now I want him to move around, and an easy way to do that is right click on the center, hit modify with, a perturb. Now if I press play, he'll be moving around but I want it to be a little bit faster than that. So I can go under the modifiers tab and then bring the speed up to five. Now he's moving around pretty quickly. So in order to get the trails effect, we basically need him to leave a duplicate of him everywhere that he's been. And we can do that using the echo node. Now this tool does not come with Fusion. It's a free plugin you can download off of Reactor. So if I hit play, you can see it has the right idea, but they're too far spread apart. Now if you're wondering why I'm not using the regular Trails node that comes with Fusion, it's because it doesn't have this subframe slider. So if I bring it up, you can see it starts filling in those gaps some. But even if I bring it up something really big like 20, you can still see the space between the duplicates. And also, if you start adding tons of subframes, it's gonna run really slow. So that's not really gonna work for us. So I'm gonna bring that down to zero. So in the transform, I can go to the settings and check motion blur and bring up the quality all the way. Now that looks better, but you can still see the gaps between them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the shutter angle and bring that up all the way. The shutter angle basically controls how much motion blur it's gonna add to it. So I'm adding twice as much motion blur as usual. Now it's looking like a trail. Now it's a little hard to see, so I'm gonna right click, go to options and uncheck checker underlay. So you might notice there's still a little bit of banding. That's because we have twice as much motion blur. We're gonna need to bring the quality up to something like 20. Now it looks good, but it's gonna run a lot slower. So I would save that as a last step after you're done playing around with everything. So I'm gonna bring it back down to 10 for now. Now back in the echo, we can make it look even smoother by bringing the subframes up to something like two or three. I think two is gonna work in this case. And to make the fall off more natural, I can take the echo gain and bring that down to 0.1. Now I want this trail to be a little bit longer, so I'm gonna bring the echo frames up to, I think, 15. I also like to change the apply mode to screen. Now at this point, what I like to do is add a brightness contrast after the media in one, and just bring up the saturation some. This is just a personal choice, but I think it makes it look better. Now that's looking really nice, but what if we want it to go even faster? Now we could go in the transform and make the perturb go even faster, but the faster we have it go here, the more you're gonna start to see those bandings. So a better way to do it is after the echo, add a time speed node. Now let's say I want this to be going three times faster, I can take the speed and bring it up to three. Now he's going super fast, but at frame 50 he just disappears, so why is that? So because I have the time speed set to three, it's taking this whole... I was gesturing with my hands, but you can't see that because it's a screen recording. So because I have the time speed set to three, it's taking this whole timeline, which is 150 frames long, and squeezing it into 50 frames. But it disappears after that because it doesn't have anything after that to draw from. So in our media in one, we can check this loop box. So now it has information for these frames out here to draw from. Now that's the basic technique, so now let's apply it to an actual shot. So I have this overhead shot of a road I got from pexels.com, I will link it in the description. So first off, there's a bit of camera movement to this shot. So what I'm gonna do is add the planar tracker, and I'm gonna find an area with some good contrast, I'm thinking this kind of square area right here. I'm gonna make an area selection around that, change the tracker to hybrid point area, and change the motion type to translation rotation scale, we don't need the other stuff. I make sure I'm on the right reference time, and then I'm just gonna track that forward. All right, that finished tracking, so I'm gonna create a planar transform, and just drag that over here. So I'm gonna take that and merge it on top of this, then I'm going to plug a background into that. Now I'm gonna make that background white, just to make things easier to see. On this first frame, everything's fine, but as we go through the shot, you can see it starts to zoom out, so it's not fully covering the screen. So after the background, I'm gonna add a transform, and just scale it up so that it fills the whole thing. All right, now I can delete the background. I don't actually need that. So now I'm going to bring in my Sonic picture from the media pool, connect that to the transform. Now the Sonic picture is not the same resolution as my footage, which can kind of throw off the tracking a little bit. So after that, I'm going to add a resize node, which should change it to the comp resolution by default, which in this case is 1920 by 1080. So obviously he's way too big. So I'm gonna add another transform and shrink him down a ton until he's about the right size for the shot, which because it's a really wide shot, it's going to be tiny. So I want him to be running down this road. So on this first frame, I'm gonna add a keyframe to the center and move it off to where I want him to start, which is somewhere up here. Now let's say I want the animation to last 10 frames long. I'm gonna go 10 frames down and then I'm just going to move him down to where I want him to end up, which is down over here. 
Now right now if I play it, he's just moving in a straight line, which is not what we want. So to adjust this path, I can click and drag out anywhere on this line here, and that'll make another point. So now I can keep on adding points and adjusting it until it fits the path a little bit better. Once I'm done, I can zoom out and select all the points and then hit Shift S just to smooth them out a little bit more. Now let's add the trail. So I'm gonna go to the settings, turn on the motion blur, bring the quality up all the way, and the shutter angle. Now at this point, we can't see him anymore because he's moving so fast. So after the median 2, I'm gonna add a brightness contrast and bring up the gain and saturation all the way. We're seeing a ton of gap between the sonics because he's moving so much in these frames. So what I can do to fix that is with the transform selected, I can go to the keyframes tab, select this to make sure it fills the frame, zoom in a little bit. Now I'm gonna take this last frame and bring it to frame 30. Now he's not moving nearly as much between the frames and thus we'll have a smoother line. Now the line's still looking a little blocky, so I'm gonna bring the quality up to 20. Again, this can make things run slowly on your computer, so you might wanna save this till as a last step. All right, so after that, I can add the echo, bring the echo frames to 15, bring the subframes to two, bring the echo gain to 0.1, and change the apply mode to normal. And on that note, in the merge, I can change the apply mode to normal there too. Now I think I wanna add some glow to this. So after the echo, I'm gonna add an X glow. Now this tool does not come with Fusion. This is another plugin that you can get on Reactor, but I love it and use it all the time. So I'm just gonna play around with the threshold until it looks good. Now I can tweak that further with a Tintensity node. Again, this is a plugin you can get on Reactor. Really, I'm just gonna bring up the saturation a little bit. So now let's fix the timing since we slowed it down to make it smoother. So I'm gonna add the time speed node, bring the speed to three since we had it go three times longer as we wanted it to. And then to avoid any issues in the media in two, I'm gonna check loop. If you really wanted to, you could use a picture of the flash instead of Sonic and easily make an overhead flash running shot. And you can use this technique for more than just super speed. You can use it on text for motion graphics or just play around and get some pretty trippy results. And if you still have a need for speed, you can check out my flash tutorial right here.